Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video here at the Xperia Experience, where I provide tips and tricks to get the most out of your Xperia. For today's topic, I'd like to discuss whether your flagship Xperia can act as a suitable replacement for a laptop or mobile station. I personally hate having to carry my personal phone, work phone, and laptop whenever I want to work away from my desk. Call me lazy or efficient, but the less items in my bag, the better. So Android has had the option to mirror the device's display to an external monitor, either via Wi-Fi or USB, assuming the device supports it. In addition, there is a somewhat hidden option to force desktop mode on a secondary display. Traditionally, Android's desktop mode in its default state is atrocious. No full screen mode for apps, very limited options to resize windows, and no multi-app support has made the experience awful. There are a few devices in the market with heavily customized versions of desktop mode, such as Samsung DeX and Motorola's Ready for Mobile, but by and large, Android desktop mode is heavily bare bones, and the same is true for Sony Xperia phones. With the recent update to Android 13 for the Mark 5 and Mark 6 series, however, things have gotten a bit more interesting. A few points to note before diving in, one of my favorite features of, of this flash of Xperia devices have been their compatibility with run-of-the-mill laptop docks. With me here is the Xperia 1 Mark 5, and it is connected to a laptop dock from HP. This allows for greater flexibility as that can connect a pretty good mix of accessories, such as expandable storage and Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. And as you can see, the device is already connected to the dock, and you can clearly see that the image is being mirrored to the monitor. But let me go ahead and attach the Bluetooth dongle that I have here, just to show the fact that Bluetooth does work with the Xperia and most, more importantly via the dock itself. Let's insert this here. There we go. And if I use my mouse, you can see the Xperia is already activating with the mouse, but I'll go ahead and put this on the big screen. Let me unlock the phone. And there you go. Lastly, one more cool thing with the Xperia is that it also supports wired Ethernet connections, either via an adapter or, in this case, a dock. Uh, and just to kind of demonstrate that, I'm going to show that the phone is currently in, in airplane mode. And if I go ahead and attach an Ethernet cable to the laptop dock, let's just do that really quickly. Uh, here we go. Where is the dock? There we go. Immediately, you will see on the Xperia that this the new icon is like a double double sided arrow. If you see that, that means that the phone is connected to uh, a wired Ethernet connection. And just to kind of show that, I will navigate to some random website. Let's go to Chrome, and right now I'm using the. Let's go to the Verge. I'm using the mouse and keyboard. I can go ahead and say go cnn.com and everything loads as expected. Just scrolling with the mouse. Pretty cool. Now, the point of this video isn't to discuss the mirroring options of the device, although it is very useful uh, in a pinch, but rather what can you do in case you want to have a different app displayed on the, on the external monitor? And for that, you have to force the phone into desktop mode. Now that option is the developer option and it is hidden. So first and foremost, if you don't have the developer options enabled, what you must do is first go into your settings, then go into about phone, scroll down to the build number. And once you see the build number, just keep tapping on the build number until you get the prompt that you're a developer. Now, in my case, I am a ready developer. I have developer settings turned on. So once you do that, go to you will get a new option on the system tray, or rather system options. And you can go ahead and tap developer options. And here you scroll down to, you can scroll down, you can search for force desktop mode and enable it here, okay? Now doing this does require a reboot to the device. So let's go ahead and enable this and we'll reboot and I will see you in a few minutes. 
All right, so the phone has rebooted. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the device. But before I do that, we'll make sure that the monitor is not in standby mode. Let's turn that back on. I'll go ahead and plug the phone in. And I should see a prompt to again mirror the display to the monitor. There it is, this mirror display. Now I can take some time for the display and the monitor to stabilize. So just give it a few seconds while it registers. And I have noticed that sometimes when the phone is in portrait mode, it does uh, take a while to, to form. So there we go. Now, the one thing about the desktop mode is that sometimes it's not always clear where the mouse is. Um, so for example here, <clears throat> excuse me, the mouse is located on the phone, but you want the mouse to appear on the actual, on the back panel, right? That's the whole point of desktop mode. Um, and you can see in the corner, in the, here in the bottom right corner, that's the actual app drawer. But how can you get there if the mouse is always on the phone? So it turns out that in order for the secondary display to make use of the mouse and the keyboard, the phone has to be in, in, in landscape mode. And for a while, that drove me crazy because I had no idea that was the case. And I have not seen that documented anywhere. So here we are, phone's in, in landscape mode. And now you can see that the mouse has jumped to the, uh, the main display, or rather the secondary display. And I'll have access to the, to the app tray. And these are different apps. So let's say if I want to start with Google Chrome. Let me just make sure I'm not showing anything crazy. That's OK. So we'll go ahead and start Google Chrome. And notice, the, in this case, the app started in full screen mode. But that's because I remember, remember from the last time it was turned on. But typically, when you start an app, it'll start vertically here. And previously, with Android 14, it was a stationary window. You could not move this. I was very limited. You couldn't do full screen mode. And now, you can actually resize the window, which was not possible before, to your heart's content. You also have the capability of going full screen mode. There it is. And you have a pretty good experience here. Uh, one thing of, to notice, if you haven't noticed already, is that the actual aspect ratio is corrected. So when we had originally just mirrored the display with no desktop mode on, the image was rendered at the aspect ratio of the phone itself at 21 by 9. But now with the forced desktop mode, we actually get to render the apps at the native resolution, excuse me, the native aspect ratio of the monitor, in this case, 16 by 9. So that makes a world of a difference. Uh, I'll go ahead and just navigate to different pages here from the Android Central website, one of my favorite websites. Um, clearly, it's a much better experience than having just a, sta a stationary form or a window, rather, in the middle of the screen. And it can have multiple apps displayed as well. So let's go ahead and open the calculator app. And there you go. So let's clear this. It works. Or I could use my keyboard. to type away. And again, full screen. If I need it to be full screen, I'll close this. And just to kind of drive home the, drive home the point, I'll open, let's say, Google Docs. Let's open up any file, or rather, any document. And now I'll minimize this. And now I have the power of a full-blown text editor on my display, on my monitor. So this, oh, let's try this again, sorry. This is a test of the full screen mode on the Xperia 
one mark five. Now, I know that's very, very tiny, but let's see if I can make that bigger. Yep. And there you have it. So you have access to the full app applications. Uh, you can have multiple windows displayed. You can resize the windows. Again, the experience is not as clean necessary, necessarily as, let's say, a Samsung DeX or Motorola ready for mobile. But all these considered, it's a really substantial upgrade to what was previously available, not just to Xperia, but in Android in general. And I think it makes a world of a difference and makes it much more usable uh, as a laptop, re laptop replacement. If you're ever in a pinch and your laptop dies, you can always just use your phone. I think it's very versatile, but please let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them as best as I can and hope you get to enjoy your Xperia device as much as I do. I will catch you in the next one. Take care.